Hello, and welcome to week three. Uh, week three is going to be a very active week for us, even though we're not meeting together as a class. Uh, we will have the, uh, the assignments where you're going to have a mandatory meeting with me. You're going to have the academic journal assignment due on Monday of this week. And uh, as the week goes on, you're certainly going to want to be working on the research question assignment. You're going to pick one of the articles in your academic journal assignment uh, to uh, expand on, to write on, but really just to pick a good idea or a good research question from. Now, you might have some questions about what I mean by research question, and, and if you do, feel free to contact me. Feel free to uh, post a discussion uh, where you ask about it. But also, I would strongly encourage you to look at the chapter three slides, which are available to you uh, in this module. Uh, the chapter three slides, I think, are particularly useful, uh, first and foremost, because it's the next thing. It's that day of class meeting that we would have had had there not been the coronavirus situation at all. We would have had one day this week off and we would have had one this day this week on. Uh, however, uh, I, I think it's, it's, it's more important uh, to think of it in terms of one of the best chapters in the entire Johnson Reynolds and Mykoff book. Uh, this is because it will talk to you about the, uh, how to come up with a research question and it will also start to talk to you about how to write a literature review. I've included an additional article by Jeffrey Knopf about how to write a literature review. Um, not so much because you should be getting started this week on your literature review. This week, if you get everything that you need to do done with uh, the research question assignment, you will have done well. And you will also be starting right down the path that will lead you to a successful literature review. If you feel like you have a lot of time left over of the time that you had allotted for the class this week, um, after you finish your research question assignment, I, I might actually ask you to take a moment and go back through uh, your research question assignment to be absolutely certain that you've engaged the material as well as you could. Uh, after all, knowing what the question is, is much more important than knowing what the answer is. There's answers just floating around in the universe. Uh, matching them with the right question is probably the biggest task that we have. Your research question is not a normative question. It's not a question of what should be done. It's a question about how the world works. You're, you're being a scientist here. Uh, you're not looking at the world as, as a bird would see it, right? But as what, an ornithologist, I think, are the people who study birds? As a, as a bird watcher would see it. And so you need to take a step back and you need to not think of how does the world work, but what is the connection uh, between some uh, variable, which we'll call, uh, which we'll call the independent variable, and some dependent variable. Or another way of thinking of it is, we're actually testing whether certain causes lead to certain effects. And, and so one of the great, most interesting things that you'll get from this is a better understanding of how the political world works. And so I think a lot of you are well on your way to coming up with good, uh, with, with good research questions just from what I've heard from you as far as looking at the academic journal assignments. In addition, I, I did include a video on how to write an introduction to a research assignment. One of the things that uh, a lot of students end up panicking over at the end is how do I write a re an introduction? You talk to me so much about how to write a literature review. You even talk to me about how to write a conclusion. 
but how do I write an introduction? And so I thought I would give you a little bit of insight into this early on and a video that's assigned particularly for um, one of the video assignments where you'll have a choice. I wanted to make sure that you all watch it. Obviously, this means you won't be graded on it, but the punishment, of course, will be that you, uh, um, you don't know how to write an introduction if you uh, manage to avoid all of the different assignments that should help you do that. So uh, I, I, I would say that one of the things that uh, you should think about when it comes to your research question. So we're assuming that you have an article that particularly interests you. Um, then it becomes a matter of what in that article uh, leaves you unsure, where you're still questioning some aspect, or it guides you toward uh, new and interesting questions. And this can be an iterative process. Uh, first, you, you find an article, and then you learn about uh, more about a topic, and you build on that. When, uh, when I first went to graduate school, um, it, this was a really huge surprise for me because uh, I always figured that you started out uh, with something that interested you, and then you just started looking for evidence to support uh, the thing that interests you. And in a perfect world, you wouldn't have an, a strong idea of how any relationship works until you started the research. And, and what, I, what I learned was that you're constantly updating your expectations. Uh, you need to discover more information. You need to discover more literature, what has been written before. And as you do that, you'll continue to update what you believe about uh, some policy, some, um, uh, some relationship between uh, causes and effects, uh, how the world works. And, and uh, it's not a matter so much of just reading what other people say. It's a matter of reading what people say um, contemplating and challenging what people say, and then going from there to find more evidence. You know, what do other people, what do other authors claim about the same issue? And I think that, uh, I think that it becomes a, um, it becomes easier to do as you gain more experience. And I understand and recognize, and I think you understand and recognize that this idea of being a creator of political knowledge, of being a creator of political science or international relations knowledge is, is brand new to you. We're always, we, every, everything is brand new once. And so we want to challenge ourselves. In, in, in a perfect world, right, you would, you would spend a year discovering everything there is to know and somehow or another, you would also uh, be learning how to write it up. But our, our exercise, the reason why our course exists is because you sometimes need to have the basis of, the, the very basics of, of writing. Um, and at the same time, you need to be gathering information. You are learning to research and write. Nobody expects this to be of the same quality as, you know, hopefully someday your master's thesis is. Everything has to start somewhere. So we challenge you. We challenge you to gather information, to write it up. We, we challenge you to gather information and then for the literature review, put it within a, a galaxy of information to, uh, to synthesize, to uh, create an overarching explanation, and then to write it up. And when you later in your career um, are 
an expert in some field or you're an expert in some tiny um, area of political science or international relations, uh, the great thing about this is you will then know what an article looks like. You'll then know how to write an empirical research uh, paper. Uh, right now, right now, we're focused a little bit more on teaching you how to gather information and teaching you uh, the structure of what your empirical research paper should look like. And the most important idea is you come up with a good research question. And how do you find the answer to a research question? Uh, you find the answer uh, by, um, by doing a literature review. And then later we're going to show you the methodologies that you'll use to test your answer to give it a chance to be proven wrong so that when it's not proven wrong, you look like a genius. The literature review assignment, and, and I would say that in addition to everything else that you do, you should go back to week one and you should see that I have uh, the written directions for the literature review assignment. And you should look at what Knopf says and you should look at what the assignment says. And if you find that there's something in there that's inconsistent, the time to ask about that's not the day before the papers due, right? The, the time to ask for that is before you've invested your time and energy. So once you have an idea of what the literature review assignment says and an idea of what Knopf says and also, the, uh, what, what Johnson says in the textbook, uh, you, will, uh, you, you will be in great position to ask some good questions, but you won't be sitting in class with me on Monday or Wednesday. So I strongly recommend that you go to the Discussions tab in D2L. You click on it, you scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see that there's a place for you to ask questions. And this is my challenge for you for this week. My challenge for you this week is pretending that we had class. I know you would all have questions. Um, post something. I will reply to anything posted. Then you should read what I've replied to. If there's a question that is everybody's question, you'll see in week four that I'll make a, I'll make a strong comment about it. Because remember, next week, we're also not face-to-face -face, thanks to um, Labor Day. Labor Day is, uh, is, the, is the bane of existence to everybody who teaches Monday and Wednesday classes, or te especially who teaches a Monday class and a Wednesday class, and then one week the Monday class just doesn't meet. So what we'll do is we'll take that entirely online too, uh, I'll probably have a slightly longer video and there'll still be some people straggling in uh, with their mandatory meetings. So everything will work really well uh, to have a, uh, to have a, a uh, online uh, meeting of this sort. Um, all right, so I am contemplating as the semester moves along the possibility of having a synchronous meeting, a, a meeting where the class can get together uh, using something like Microsoft Teams so that I can uh, present uh, some material to all of you while we're not actually in class. And then afterward recording that so that we will be able to, you know, if you can't make the synchronous meeting, that you will get the chance to watch the video later on. We'll figure something out. Um, I, I certainly, uh, we're, we're getting off maybe on the uh, wrong foot as far as the sort of Q&A aspect of class goes. I, I'm not the type of person who uh, just goes entirely with the seminar format, but it certainly is nice to have four, five, six questions per class. And I, I think because we're all sitting around with masks on and we're all afraid that, you know, the next breath we take might 
be spreading coronavirus that we don't communicate as much as we would normally. And so I think that what we probably need to do is we probably need to incentivize communication in some way. Um, I, I really wish I could disincentivize non-communication uh, more because after all, it's, uh, it, shouldn't be a, it, it, it shouldn't be a great accomplishment uh, to think of a question or two, but I understand. It, this, is, this is really, really a, uh, a strange year for all of us and just understand and recognize that uh, I gather energy from communication. And uh, if, you, if you have a question, don't think you're asking me a bad question. I'm so hungry for the question at the moment that uh, I'm sure to appreciate it. All right, so anybody has any questions, be sure to contact me. Otherwise, uh, I, will, I will be talking to you over the next two weeks in our mandatory meetings. Uh, remember that you should contact me by telephone. Uh, I, I will post my telephone number as an announcement on D2L. Thank you all.